Hello, good morning, and welcome. You're here with Brothers Forge Gaming, and this is Chasm on the PlayStation 4, available as a download. Uh, I believe it's normally about 20 bucks. I caught it on sale for $9.99. Totally worth it, whichever way you want to get it in this Metroidvania style game. And what we have for you right here is a platinum trophy guide. So come along with me if you're looking to get your next platinum. And also, going to be adding a complete walkthrough on hard. Well, not a complete walkthrough, sorry. It's a complete playthrough on hard. But during the playthrough, I give tips and tricks on also some areas where you're going to need some help with the platinum and some, some different ideas and things like that. So watch both these videos if you're looking for some help getting your platinum trophy guide could sh could save you some time and that's what we're going for right here and not only is this a fun game to play but you can again you can get that platinum that being said there is one platinum sitting at 7.3 percent uh, i think it went to 7.4 percent when i got it before i wrote that down <laughs> um, eight gold five silver and seven bronze for a total of 21 trophies what i'm going to do in this video, I'm going to break down these trophies for you. I'm going to talk about the game a little bit. Then uh, I'm going to kind of go over some of the different some of the different options um, and whatnot. And then we're going to go in. I'm going to show you the town, show you all the different NPCs, so that you can be aware of that. I'm going to show you the complete maps, and I'm going to show you the full bestiary. So those are some things that are going to help you out. And like I said, talk about some of the platinum stuff along the way. So um, you know, thanks for joining in, guys. Um, and this, like I said, this is more of an informative kind of thing than an, than an entertainment thing. So if you have no inter interest in a platinum trophy, then this this video may not be for you i don't know check it out either way um and like i said make sure to watch watch the full playthrough of this to get all the tips and tricks you're gonna need now this game is is sort of a like a roguelite in a lot of ways uh each done each room or whatever is handcrafted but then it's stitched together differently for each playthrough using what they call as a seed so i'm going to go over that and which seed to use for your playthrough if you want to utilize the maps and different things that I show you here. But either way, if you don't want to do that, most of the information should still be relevant um, to you. Okay, now in the in the walkthrough or playthrough, I should say, we looked at some of the different options and whatnot. So we're just going to get directly into what we're talking about here in the Platinum Trophy Guide. And if you guys are looking for more of these, more fun games to play, more Platinums to get more help on that kind of subject, check out our full Platinum Trophy Guide playlist on our site. It's on our main page, and you can also find it in the playlist section of our uh, page here on YouTube. Uh, okay, so... Basically, there's three ways you can approach this in terms of playthroughs. You can either play through the game out the gate on hard difficulty, gaining your first playthrough, achieving the trophy to beat it on hard, and then uh, then you'll just need to go back and beat the game on mortal, and you can complete that on easy. Uh, I played through this game originally on normal. I wasn't even sure if I was going to like it kind of thing, and then I, I got slowly addicted, and, and I don't know if I shot myself in the foot there. But the game is pretty tough on hard. Um, if you're not somebody who is an avid gamer and, and into this kind of thing and wants to beat your head against the wall trying to get it done on hard first you may enjoy a playthrough on on normal first or even easy um and once you once you beat the game you unlock and we'll go over that you unlock the ability to class select which 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 will help you with the mortal run and your uh run on hard so as you can see here um, on normal run there, it took about 12 hours. About two of that's probably garbage time where I just had the controller down or whatever. So, you know, you're looking at about 10 hours for your playthrough and then five for each subsequent next playthrough. Um, now, you do need to get 100% as one of the trophies on this. So that's what I did on the normal run. I got all the items, all the NPCs, all the everything you need to get for the trophies, beat it, and then went on to do the next run. I did the mortal run because I was like, well, if the game's going to be impossible to beat, because mortal run means you can't die. Now there's some exploits there we can explore as well. Basically, so you have to go for a no death run. So I was like, well, I'll go for the no death run to see if that's even something that I can do or want to do. It, it ended up being pretty easy on easy, uh, utilizing the mage class, which again, we'll go over. Uh, the most difficult part was beating the game on hard. 
uh, it was it was pretty tough. Um, but that again, that could be because I rolled a, a mage again on the hard setting where you're getting hit, and you're, you know you can only take a couple shots as a mage as a clothy, as it should be. So um, then again, I said I, uh, what I was talking about. Then I went and beat the game on hard. Um, well, after I beat the game on mortal, which you can see here. Uh, there's a there's that little eye thing there that signifies that you're on your no death run. If you die, you can you know it erases your save file. Now within this game, you can copy, you can cross save. Uh, if you have beta and all that, you can use the cloud saves and things like that. So those could be a way around this. You know if you're dying, um, if you have these backup saves, I highly doubt it's gonna find and erase your backup save as well. So I believe it'll just erase the file you're on. So. A, a helpful hint for you there on your no death run is to be duping your save files I didn't die so I couldn't tell you if, if it somehow finds and eats all your save files associated with the no death run it may I don't know I, I can't imagine it would find it on your cloud save so um, there's kind of a way around that there if you're looking for that but it's really not too bad if you play through on easy with the mage class and uh, we're going to talk about that again like I said so that, that's the basic ideas of it there. You got to beat it on hard. You got to do a no death run and you have to basically 100% the game um, on one of your runs. And so that being said, let's let's talk about these trophies right here. Okay, so um, and then if you see that seed on there, uh, that's the seed you're going to want to use 5E200AC. And, and I'll show you where to put that in when you when you start a game. Uh, Okay, so basically there's a trophy for Warrior, which is to defeat a thousand enemies. Then you have um, a bunch of trophies for beating bosses. One is the Wendigo, the Catakiller. Gollum! <laughs> Gollum! Uh, King Trill. You've got the Shaman. You've got Ulak, which is, I believe, the main boss. Now you've got a trophy for slaying one thousand enemies. Whether or not that the 1,000 now there's a couple of these so whether or not the the you have to defeat the 1,000 enemies in a single playthrough I'd imagine that you do but you're gonna pretty much do that anyway uh, regardless if not just you know grind out some few enemies at the end of your run in case you haven't killed a thousand enemies for some reason just in case you know next time you go on a run you're not even anywhere near that amount of kills and you beat the game so keep an eye on that it shows you on the screen there how many you've killed you've got, you can look at your lifetime stats and different things on uh the options menu there okay so next you have big spender spend five thousand gold i believe that's in one playthrough as well shouldn't be too difficult for you to do that you got to buy some items and potions and armor and stuff and you'll get there pretty easily uh next is for bookworm and that is to find all the journal entries in the game these are none of these are very hidden they actually show up on the map as well as these dots so you can go back to them um, which is nice about this game is that is that most things are identified on the map for you there are very few hidden like out of the way kind of things you have to look for very very few and you shouldn't have any trouble doing that and again i'm, I'm gonna say most of these are so you're gonna probably have to do it in one playthrough for all the general entries uh there's another one superhero find all the power-ups same thing uh the next one crate buster bust all the crates in the game uh one playthrough i believe so um gilded knight Gildian Knight. Now this is to complete the game on hard. Uh, this this trophy actually had a higher percentage than the Mortal Run, but I found it to be more difficult, uh, more grindy. You know, you had to take your time. And again, that could be because I rolled Mage. I don't know. Maybe if you roll Warrior, you're taking you're not taking damage and you're just smashing through it. I don't know. Um, so maybe I made that more difficult on myself. So if you want to make it more difficult on yourself, play through the game on the mage out and hard to see if that's, you know, the hardest way to go. And then eventually you'll unlock a nightmare difficulty, but you, you, you don't need that to get the platinum. Uh, okay, so next is Mere Mortal. Complete the game as mortal. And that's what I've been talking about here with the no death run you have to complete. Uh, with those workarounds, though, you should be fine. Um, if, you're, if you're familiar with the game and you played through it already, you probably aren't, aren't going to need that, but it's always a good idea, um, especially if you don't want to waste five hours of your life beating the game, you know, dying on the end boss and, and really being upset. Uh, do utilize those backup saves. And then um, Gladiator is to become the arena champion. Now, in the uh, keep section of the game level, I think it's like the fourth level, uh, eventually you're gonna uh, find an area where there's an arena and it's it's like three fights and then a boss fight completely not essential to the game unless you are going for a 100% run I don't recommend doing it on your mortal run as it is a very difficult fight uh, and you, it's easy to just get killed quickly there 
Uh, so, you know, save that for your one run, your 100% run. The only thing you're going to lock is some probably not very good gear unless you get lucky and it's a gold drop. Um, and again, there's an exploit where this game is kind of random. So if you if there's an item you really want and you and you know where a good save point is, you can, and I talked about this in the, in the run, the complete run, you can kind of like manipulate it that way. You can like, you know, load save, load save, or whatever, tell you... You know, keep opening the chest and then quit, and then if it's not what you want, go back and open it. And eventually, it may be a gold drop by the time you open it, because you can get common, which is white, blue, which is uncommon, and then you know, gold, which is rare. I don't think there's legendary. I haven't seen an orange drop um, in the game. So maybe on nightmare difficulty, you start to get legendary gear. I don't know. Uh, but like I said, you could you can kind of exploit that the game that way. Uh, most of it's pretty random in terms of what you're going to be getting. So. Uh, I don't know if that always works, but I've, I've utilized that a few times because in the gladiator arena you unlock this gladiator gear Which is only helpful if it's a gold drop And I thought it'd be cool to be suited and booted in full gladiator gear Okay, next we have socialite rescue all missing villagers and again is this all is this one playthrough? Com good Samaritan complete all their villager side quests same thing um, explore explore 100% of the map uh, you should get that. Nothing's hidden. You don't. Ha there are hidden rooms throughout the game, but they don't count for your 100% exploration uh, against you. So there's no, you know, it's not Symphony of the Night. There's not 200% complete that you have to get to get that platinum trophy, finding every nook and cranny. Okay, so uh, that one you should you should get really easily. Uh, there's a couple places you'll have to go back once you have double jump and glide and different abilities to get those upper rooms that you can't reach. So do keep that in mind. But like I said, it shows up on the map. So you're good there. Next, Zoologist. Unlock all the bestiary entries. Um, I'll show you about that, but basically you have to kill an enemy a certain amount of times uh, to unlock them. Eventually you unlock this uh, sword from doing the, the hunter's side quest. He gives you a sword that you only have to kill the enemies one time with the sword, but by the time you get it, it's sort of irrelevant. It may help you in the end of the game, but realistically it's more of a pain in the ass to have to like switch back and forth between the sword. So my, my advice, if you're going for that one is just once you get to an area, kill all the enemies until they show up in your, in your bestiary and they kind of come up in an order. And, and I'll show you that again here in a little bit. Okay. Next is prize fighter. Defeat a boss without getting hit. Uh, there, the bosses, it's, it's like any old school game. They have mechanics and once you learn them and figure them out, it's a little easier to deal with the bosses. I did this trophy on the first boss. Um, he's fast and, and kind of sneaky in a way, but he's probably the easiest boss to do a no hit run on. Okay, so all that being said, if you're looking to play through the game on hard first, you're only going to need two playthroughs. You're probably looking, for the average player, you're looking about three playthroughs, about 20 hours to get this platinum trophy. Uh, there's nothing really super hidden okay so you do have to go back and forth and you know once you unlock an ability go back and like find these chests so there's a lot of that but nothing is like hidden in the wall somewhere for you that to have to find an impossible task uh, there's a little bit of tough platforming so if you're somebody who can't platform or doesn't like platforming you may not enjoy this game and, and some of the harder parts of the game might be difficult for you but nothing crazy we're not talking Mega Man level here okay next um, what's strange is you see a huge drop off in the numbers from the platinum. So, so most of these trophies are sitting around 30% or something like that, but the platinum is sitting at 7%. So I don't know what that says. I think it's a very excellent game. Totally worth playing through the game two or three times. Um, you're going to have a good time doing it. So the platinum on this really should be a little higher, I feel, but maybe it's a time consuming thing and trophy hunters are looking for that quick hitter, you know, five, five, uh, five hour or less platinum. So it's possible that's what's happening there and then the average player is just beating the game and going okay that was good i'm done uh but really there's some opportunity here for you so you platinum trophy hunters out there this is a good game a fun game and you can get that plat pretty easily i've uh <laughs> definitely played some harder ones much harder much harder platinums okay and then like i said if you want to play on normal first to get, get kind of familiar with the game and unlock the classes that's probably going to help you on your hard and no death run so that being said, there is a no death run necessary for you to have to complete. So if that intimidates you, like I said, it's really not that hard. There's a little bit of workarounds and then beating the game on hard is, is definitely the most difficult and time consuming. Well, maybe not even the most time consuming part, but it's pretty difficult. Okay. So now we're going to get into the next part of the game. We're going to take a look at the NPCs in the towns. We're going to go over the maps and the bestiaries, something in that order. All right. So here we go.
But wait, there's more. Okay, so... Um, when you start a new game... So you can... Here's where you'd put the seed in that I was telling you about. 5E200AC. You can see that on the a complete run as well. It shows up whenever you pause the game or on the front of the screen if you need to go back. Uh, now, here's where you can select the difficulty. Nightmare! Oh my goodness. I almost want to play through the game on Nightmare to see how hard it is. And, and I may at some point. Um, easy, normal. So like I said, if you want to start off the game on hard to... to you know mitigate the amount of times you have to play through the game good luck hard is tough okay and then this is where you would turn on the mortal on or off so as you can see when you die the game is over it's a no death run essentially not that hard though don't be scared of it no death runs are, are kind of intimidating they are um, especially in old school games you know when you're trying to no death run some crazy old hard game and like ghost and goblins or something why you'd ever try to do that i don't know <laughs> the game is ridiculous but if you were trying to do that i mean that's super intimidating but this not so much not as much as that and then here's where you can do a mage which which so it, it levels when you level and how you start out the game basically this is a mana intensive one so if you're going to be using the uh you know like the special weapons like in castlevania the holy water the cross everything um, that's that's kind of more your build here, and I prefer this because the one one of the gripes I have about this game is that the the melee is slow, so you have to like it's kind of like trying to hit a baseball like in a baseball game when you're playing like an old baseball game on an HD TV, how like how you have to like kind of correct for that lag input, and it, I just feel like that's it, that's part of this game, or maybe it's me, maybe I suck, <laughs> I'm terrible at this game, but I, I had more fun being the mage, so I liked that build there. The thief I can imagine is a blend between maybe a warrior and a mage. Maybe you get a little more mana, but you also get a little bit of luck and maybe some strength and constitution there. Uh, so that might be kind of like a cool in-between class, but it doesn't mean you get like a crossbow or something. At least I don't think so. <laughs> maybe you do. Um, but yeah, so and then you can also roll with the warrior. Um, and then there's an intro in the game that you can skip on or off after you've beat it. So these are, these show up after you beat it, which is why I would kind of recommend just maybe beating the game first to see if it's even something you want to do uh, in terms of going for the Platinum. It's definitely worth a playthrough on normal. It's a fun game. It's challenging, not too challenging. Easy was a lot easier. Okay, so uh, like I said, there. So let's take a look at this. And then you can see these different files. I've been backing up my files as I go along. Sometimes you run into a spot where you're like, oh crap, I did this or did that and you didn't want to do it. So it's always good to have backups in games like this. But here is the one. Here is the run that I did on the full, the full Monty. And we're going to take a look at some of that different stuff I showed you. First, we're going to look at these NPCs. Oh, okay, so there's an example of the shield. See, I wanted to see if you save, because as a mage, when you save, it gives you full mana. So that is one of the nice things, and as you see there, it did not do that for the warrior class. So you're relegated to this is the only way to fill your mana besides potions or breaking barrels or breaking lamps. So that was one really nice thing about the mage class. Now in my run that I did, the uh, full run, I screwed up, and this is like the first NPC you're supposed to unlock, maybe besides the professor uh, here, and I totally missed her. She's in the beginning of the game. Um, I'll actually show you in case you're watching both of these runs. So kind of right here above to the left of where that blue and that little house is there, there's that double stacked area. She's up there and to the left. Okay, so, um, where was it? Over here. So one of those two areas, it's either the one by this, kind of more by this house or over by the save room. Either one of those areas, I think it's, I think it's actually, yeah, that more of that middle room there by the red. Uh, so uh, right there is, in because the, you can see that room in the corner, that single room. I'm pretty sure she's right there. And then what you're going to need to do is eventually you're going to need to find her uh, book so you can start powering up your weapons. And that's right down here in this bottom corner. And again, this isn't the playthrough. So that you know, the yellow room right there, you just drop straight down. You have to you have to wait till you unlock the slide. And you can slide under and get it. And it's the same thing for the blacksmith hammer, which is, which is up here and to the right. You have to slide under there, kind of similar to where you find that. And that's all in that run. So make sure to check that out. But again... This is somebody you find her a book and she upgrade you can upgrade you can buy armor um, she's kind of like your magic vendor here's your blacksmith uh to get to be able to craft you have to find his blacksmith hammer like i was talking about and that and that's in that area and this guy i don't remember where you find him i think you find him in the catacombs um 
once you get oh wait so I believe he's kind of like right here in, on the map once you oh no right here so right down here once you fall down here you have to like go in here to find an ability or something to get out some something like that but anyway I believe he's right down in there again it's in the playthrough now within here there are several NPCs there's a bar maiden a winch if you will she makes you potions and whatnot there's a bread merchant or you know she sells you like a baker baker lady now the princess is the dog can't even talk to her she's the last NPC that you find or that I found this is the professor he's kind of like the main NPC in the game uh, this guy is a bounty hunter once you have to find like two and I'll show you, you have to find these two items that uh, that you know once you unlock he gives you or once you find him he gives you I forget what he gives you something irrelevant maybe like an oh he gives you an item that um, helps you like a luck item that helps you for farming um, and this is a little kid you find him closer towards the end as well Knights and Bandits I wonder if that's like D&D &D. <laughs> um, or Cops and Robbers maybe at the time um, so you find him uh, towards the end as well this guy you find early but he he needs an item and then once you uh, we'll play the game why not We'll show you. So once you once you unlock his cards, you find this fun memory game. I like memory. It's one of my favorite games as a kid, growing up. And then the, um, yay! And then, uh, whoa, look at that luck. What was that one here? And then once you, uh, oh man, it was right next to them. No? Dang it. So good, my memory is there. And then you can play this game any number of times. Oh man, was that right here? nice uh, you can play this game any number of times to get the coins it's kind of a slow grind to to get uh, to get coins because they go fast in the slot machine as you know oh no I knew where both of those were ah. cup no land oh, I lose okay so I needed to be going a little faster there boohoo okay and then once you do that you can go crazy I've never I got 14 coins let's see can we get it orange orange Maybe if you mash. Ugh. Is this like Mario 2? You just got to mash? No, that's not working. Let's see, can we hit it? Oh, come on. Oh, uh, all right. Seven, seven, seven. I've never won one of these. I don't know, if you can you see it? Am I just screwing up the timing? I mean, it's pretty tough to see. Like, you feel like you can see it, but... Oh, this is a rip. It's a rip. It's like the casino. A loser. I'm a loser. Uh, beware once you start that I think you can't back out of it until you run out of coins just remind me not to save <laughs> okay so here is the uh, hunter he gives you the blade I was talking about what you have to bring him four um, stakes or something from killing a certain enemy not super hard there in the first level this is the miner you find him you have to find him an item as well his uh, stash it's actually worth doing you get 500 gold from that um, and then he sells you there's a limited supply, so once you buy them, they're done. But these are items you use to power up your uh, special weapons, and then these are to craft gear and stuff. Um, and then here, this guy actually took off. You find him, and then he has a quest for you as well to bring him four platinum ingots, which is a lot. is a lot of grinding. He gives you a secret detector, which, which isn't super helpful, especially by the point you find it in the game. But if you watch our playthrough... Uh, I kind of talk about that and show you where the hidden rooms are anyway. But basically, like any good game like this, there are hidden rooms and they're you know tucked away on the wall or whatever in plain sight. Um, and you'll kind of see them as you're going along. Not super relevant, not important. On your hard and nightmare run, they're, they're definitely more important to get those extra potions with extra life and stuff. Um, that's going to help you in the end, but really not that important. Anyway, and then he eventually flies off. And then this is basically the first place you go in the game. Here's a list. So what I like about this, a lot of these games they don't have, you're like, who the hell am I missing? This tells you all the people, crosses it off as you find them. Um, and this tells you about a party, nothing crazy. But then this is about the other, um, the bounty hunter quest I was telling you about. You gotta find these two people. They're both um, dead and you just have to find their remains basically and then bring him that item. And then eventually, you know, you ring the guy and he's super excited. He tells you, each time you find a guy, he says to come back and talk to him. He does nothing for you. Oh, you know what? I think maybe he gives you an item once you have found them all. Nothing crazy. Okay, so let's take a look at these maps real quick. And as you can see, as you notice there... Once you have completed an area, you get a nice little checkbox right up there. 
very nice. Okay. And so, like I said, for this to be, for you to be able to utilize this, you're going to want to use that seed that I showed you at the beginning. Um, and then you'll get the same map here. So this is a look at the completed map of the mines. Full force. I don't think I can zoom in or out. Nope. So we'll just kind of scroll by. So that's the left zone. And then here is that zone. So, you know, hopefully if this map will help you out. And then, like I said, there's nothing like super hidden. You have to go back and forth. Uh, having the complete map maybe isn't going to help you like entirely, but maybe it will. So here's that. The blue rooms signify the like transition rooms, and then the red rooms are the save rooms, and the yellows are the portals. Okay, and then it kind of tells you sort of where those blue rooms are taking you. So the catacombs had a lot of twists and turns. It was one of the harder levels, for sure. Especially starting out, because you're low level and these enemies start getting ramping up here. And then as you can see, there's several areas where you have to go without being able to save or portal. So you need to be prepared for those areas. But there's a look at that. Now the gardens. You can kind of see that in one frame there. And then the keep. So we'll kind of go down here and then I'll move it over. So nothing nothing too out of control here. Um, like I said, most of it's really straightforward. This one branches off way over here. That's probably one of your harder runs is from that save room all the way over to that save room. That is a tough bit of stretch there. Um, and I believe that's ultimately the boss fight up there, is it? Maybe something like that. So yeah, yeah. And eventually you go up there. Oh yeah, because you have to find a. Um, in this part too, if you want to skip it, I, I in the complete run, there's a code you can get that you need to progress this side. But you can skip all this other stuff if you're just trying to beat the game. And that the code is in that run if you want to see it. You have to ring the bells in a certain order to open the the door to progress. So uh, yeah, that's that's there for you if you if you want to skip all that. Could save you some time. Um, look look forward to that. It's in the video. You just have to skip ahead and I talk about it in the video. Okay, so there's the keep. Now, this is probably the most annoying part is the temple because you basically have to go and unlock, you know, like these certain things to, to progress. So it, it's portals and it takes you all over the place and, you know, you feel like you're getting lost and then you go back and, you know, so this map really might not super help you. Um, but yeah, just knowing where the stuff is might. So yeah, take a look at this. It's not overly difficult, but it is annoying. And, and there's some hard stretches in here. Um, trying to kill these. These are some of the toughest enemies in the game. And there's no save room here. So you're always having to portal out if you want to save. And I do recommend saving often in this game. So yeah, that's a look at that. And then ultimately you go to hell, the magma chamber. Why is that dot there? Did I set a waypoint? I must have. That's weird. <laughs> uh, I believe there's a hidden room there. So wherever that dot is flashing is the one hidden room I found in there. But as you can see, there's only one save point. And then once you get to a certain point, uh, slightly after the save point, you can't leave the level. So when you go into this level, be ready to beat the game. Okay. And it's a straightforward path. So you, don't, you just go that way. Okay. So, you know. That's the look there. That's a look at all the maps. Hopefully that's helpful to you. Now let's take a look at the bestiary. Or I guess the, the journal. Let's take a look at the journal. Or I can show you, yeah, I'll show you some of my end game equipment here. Again, you get the gladiator armor from the arena fight. The gilded hammer is the best uh, weapon in the game I've found. I, I even, you can unlock the sword of light, which as you can see here is not as good as the gilded hammer is faster, but the arcing hammer swing is is what I found to be the most effective way to kill stuff in this game. Now, not being a magic user, I went with magic shield, but the, the triple knife is the best. Uh, level three knife is the best of these that I've found in terms of just spamming and just wrecking shop. Okay, this was a drop off of a bird uh, enemy and it ended up getting a gold one there, which which was really OP. Um, and then where do you find the lion ring? This is the one you might get from saving all the villagers from the mayor at the end. This is the secret detector I told you about that you found. 
Oh, this is the one the other guy gives you, Hunter Jinx, and it, it boosts your luck 10 points, which is nice. And then a lot of this other stuff you find. So just along the way, depending on what you what your build is, that's my build for kind of like a just a base class. I was more of an attack heavy, you know, than a magic user on there. More of a warrior build. Um, and then you get, you know, different food and potions and things. Um, there's an exploit you can do for, there's these learning scrolls. And kind of similar to what I was talking about with, this, with the treasure chest is that you can, um, if you don't get the result you want, because you use the scroll and it gives you one random stat. If you don't like this thing, you know, you can just load, reload the game and use the scroll tell you get if you're going for a strength build or whatever. Because as a warrior intelligence really probably isn't going to help you too much. So, um, <laughs> anyhow, let's take a look. So these are all the different um, entries that you'll find throughout the game. So you want, if you want to see what a complete look is here. And this is what I was talking about, the King's Procession. This is the code if you want to use it there to, to circumvent... The rest of the parts if you're really if you're going for a run you're going to need all the items and different things you're going to find but if you're on if you're just trying to master the game there's the code for you and again there's several spots like that too there's there's another spot um in the catacombs where you have to fall down and then go get this code but if you want to skip that too that's in the video as well if you just want to run straight through there but there's you know the blacksmith is down there and some other some other stuff that you're looking for now here's your artifacts. This is so so if you if you've played any of these Metroid or Castlevania games, you understand that you get double jump, slide, glide, whatever. Um, so this is what every artifact is. And this is again, this is for a trophy. So here's all the the diving gear is what you get from beating the arena. So that's kind of like the last one you're gonna get there. Everything else you basically get through playing through the game. And this is the one piece of equipment that that you kind of have to do a little extra for. Now, if you're looking at the beast area and you're trying to complete this, this this is a simple kind of methodology here. Hey, let's see, somebody, oh, was that Nintendo? Okay. Okay, so basically, like, you get to an area. So this is the first area, right? So the crawler, one of the first enemies you experience. So, and this is kind of how you can um, gauge it Okay, you're going along, you're going along, and look, and it tells you, well, it doesn't tell you here, but you have to kill an enemy a certain amount of time, so it'll be a question mark on the screen, and it'll say X amount of kills more required to unlock the enemy, and like I said, so just kind of as you're in a certain area, you're going to see these enemies, and you're going to see them in a progressive way, so the further you go in that area, you're going to, you know, kind of see these different enemies as a progression. Cave Troll's a mid-boss. Okay, Rock Troll... So forth and now you're going you're getting ice glop now your slimes your cobalt are getting stronger this is the boss okay so any enemy you had before this boss right here is going to to uh, be in that area so once you've left once you hit the boss we are now in the next area we're in the catacombs so all of these kind of enemies and they kind of theme for the area as well you know you're in the catacombs you're gonna see gnarly things like flies and fly pods and skeletons and wits and meat men and different things you know bone devils and mummies and all that fun stuff necromancers so and then here is the boss you can kind of tell because it's one kill and that's you know all you're going to get because it's a boss and it's dead after that same thing with mid bosses there's pretty much the only enemies that don't respawn uh in the game so now that you've seen that now you're going to keep going now we're in the keep Oh, wait, no, this guy's from the keep, so that's weird, because you go to the keep to have to go to the garden, right? So now we're in the garden, so that may be one of the areas where that, that kind of mode I was telling you doesn't necessarily fit true. But it is an order of appearance, kind of, in a, in a lot of ways. Not so much an order of appearance, but in that level, this is where you're finding all these guys, is in the garden. And it tells you what the drops are, are, are also. So if you're having trouble finding this enemy, this person throws these out. If somehow you're killing this so fast before they throw out the thorn plant, that's where you find the thorn plant. So, okay, I think we're back down in the, mine, in the mines now. So the, the enemy's theme. So just think of it as in a theme and then also in terms of how you're progressing the game. This is where that, that theory I had is, is getting a little wish-washy. Uh, this is a mid-level boss in the garden. This is another mid-level boss in the garden. Um, so then, then most of these guys are in the garden here. 
Gorilla is one of the toughest enemies. They drop a scale mail if uh, you're looking for that. I actually got a um, pretty good drop, a gold drop, a scale mail off of that guy. was really good. Um, and then this is the boss of the garden. Okay, freaking terrifying, man. Look at that thing. So now we are back to the keep. This enemy is annoying in the keep. So all these guys are coming in the keep. I freaking hate puppets, man. So scary. And then, uh, let's see here. You know, just your classic enemies. Love these guys. Gargoyle. This is a good enemy to drop gold ingots off of. So yeah, if you have been paying attention as well, too, I've discovered most of the drops on these guys. So if you want to go back and see which guys get good drops. So this is how I farmed gold bars to get that Gilded Hammer, which is the best uh, weapon in the game, if you ask me. And you can also farm some more and get the gold armor, which is pretty good as well. The zombie hand only appears in one spot, um, and it's kind of as you're progressing through the catacombs to like the next area after you, I think it's before the boss, but anyway, they poke out of the ground, they, they'll usually get you because you want, you're like, what the hell, this is the only enemy that does this, um, but so that one was kind of hard to find if you're having trouble, and this is in the catacombs, I want to say, I'm pretty sure. Uh, so are these guys, maybe they were in the keep too, I don't know, anyhow. So that's, that's these guys here. Like I said, my theory is becoming a little debunked at this point, but most of these guys are in the same area. And, and again, this is a look for you at, at these if you're, if you're going for it and you're having trouble. Um, the ones I had trouble with, this is a mid-level boss. The ones I had trouble with were, uh, let's see, King Trell. Wraith. Oh my gosh, that guy's scary. So these are all bosses. Man, Narlax. <laughs> Spoilers, that's the uh, the guy you fight in the arena. Wolf Beast. Okay, I guess to, yeah, to get this guy, you have to uh, be progressing the storyline with the bounty hunter and the lost uh, the lost uh, criminals. Then you have to, those two guys I was showing you earlier. Uh, once you get to a certain point in the thing, you, you kind of like, as you're going back, this, this Wolf Beast pops up. And be prepared, this guy's gnarly. <laughs> okay, and I'll show you where it was the guys I had trouble with. Then you be careful because this guy, one of these guys looks like this and the other guy has like a spear. And I'll show you. So that could be, you could be confused there as well, like as I was. So you had the Royal Guard and then this guy. So the Temple Guard, they're a little bit different. You, you know, you can tell them there. And these guys are the hardest ones. The only way I could tell these guys apart was, uh, well, there's the Lordor, the Lodori Priest. Look at that, Chimera, mid-level boss, scary. Um, and then the Lodori Priestess. So they almost look the same if, if you're not paying attention. One of them kind of sh throws like a scatter shot. And the other guy throws more of like a, just a regular beam ball thing at you. So, and this guy's only in one spot. These guys are, I believe only in one spot. They're in different spots. So uh, that's, you know, one to look out for. That was the one that was hanging me up. I was like, where the hell is this person? And um, they were in the temple, a kind of upper in the upper map. Um, you'll run across them. And once you see it, well, like I said, once you see these enemies, kill them until you have you, they show up in your bestiary. So just keep checking back, and if you if you don't see it, it shows up on the screen when you do. It shows like a little book entry thing pop up on the screen. So, um, you know, you should be able to tell that way. But it's, sometimes you're not paying attention to that. I know often I wasn't, so I would just keep checking the bestiary and, um, you know, make sure I was killing like the right enemy or something. I honestly, this just showed up in the bestiary. I have no idea what is going on with I don't know if it was a glitch. Or something, but as you can see there, I didn't kill any, and I don't ever remember seeing these guys. Maybe they're in the f in the last level, and you just randomly don't see them. I don't know. I don't remember this enemy at all, but it did show up in there, and I'm assuming maybe that's what's going on with that. Maybe they had to patch the game. Maybe it was glitched. Maybe this enemy is a glitched enemy. Maybe that's why the... Uh, Platinum rate on this is so low. Maybe maybe this was a glitched thing. I don't know. Uh, but there it is. Like I said, it showed up in mine. So maybe check your bestiary to begin with in the very beginning to see if this is in there. And possibly if it's not, you're not going to be able to get the platinum. I don't know. Um, that, and that would explain the drop-off too. Oftentimes when you see a, a huge drop-off in those numbers, that there's usually a glitch. Like if, if you're looking in all the... You know, like Shiny was one. They actually patched it. We did a video on it. I don't know if that's what helped them patch it or not. But... Uh, you could see like every trophy was like 80% and then the platinum was 0.01%. You're like, oh, okay, there's obviously a problem here with this. So shadow spawn, grill. Oh 
man, that thing's nasty. Ooh, Shambla. Now, if you're trying to get meteorite ingots to make the, the coolest armor set in the game, this is the guy I was farming, but man, they, the drop rate is so low. I think there was one other guy that dropped him. Uh, I think it was these guys. The uh, guards dropped him, I believe. Anyway, I didn't discover it on that run. They're that rare. And then there's the last boss. So once you kill the final boss, Ulak, you will pop that. You'll get the map for going there. You'll get the complete um, bestiary finally. So that's all going to pop off at the end. And that's a look. At, that's a look there. That's a look at all of that. I believe that was everything I wanted to cover. If you guys have any questions, let me know in the comments. I will try to answer them. As time goes on, you know how it is. You forget these things. Um, there is a complete run as i said i'm going to be i'm working on that i just need to finalize it and repost it right now the video is five videos but it's going to become one video so that should help you the complete run on hard with this game i talk about a lot of this stuff in that video as well uh, so hopefully the, both of these will will guide you along your way to getting your next platinum trophy and again this game is fun so even if you're not going for a platinum trophy uh hopefully all this information will help you i know how to blast playing this game um, and I still, I kind of, like I said, I kind of want to run through it on Nightmare right now, uh, but I'm not going to. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, like I said, guys, hopefully that's helpful for you. Make sure to check out all of our Platinum Trophies guides in our Platinum Trophy Guide playlist here on Brothers Forge Gaming. And we'll see you next time.